The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 373 Airborne Interlude Yes, Starlight feebly cheered, flexing a muscle in what was probably supposed to be a hoof bump, curled deep into the cushions of the couch Twilight had dragged into the kitchen. I made it to the end of Iron Ridge. Yes, you did, Twilight agreed, agitated. You also said we could finish last night and you wouldn't blow out your voice, but you ended on a giant dramatic cliffhanger, and I'm never going to get to sleep even though it's dawn! That's not cliffhanger, Starlight mumbled, face already tucked beneath her hooves. Twilight flared her wings in exasperation. Well, whatever you want to call it. You got vandalized or chased out of town or... I thought you were going to live there for a while and grow up and... and... She rubbed her stinging, sleep-deprived eyes, shock and adrenaline preventing them from closing even an inch. Hemlock! You magic and... Did you ever find out what really happened? Did he actually fight you or why did you hallucinate or... Starlight! It was too late. Starlight was snoring cutely and refused to budge. Oh! Twilight gave a whine of despair, covered her own head with her wings and sank back into the couch in front of the ashes of a long dead fire, wondering if she would ever get to sleep. She didn't. Seconds ticked into minutes, and after resisting the urge to check five entire times, Twilight looked up and saw that the clock's hands hadn't visibly changed. She flipped over, planting herself face down against the back of the couch, hind legs dangling to the floor and wings spread limply. Every instance of just a little further, she had told herself, beginning when Starlight sailed away from Iron Ridge the first time, again in Riverfall and again back to Iron Ridge, and again and again had built up an expectation of an ending worth waiting for, some peaceful transition in which time could finally speed up like Starlight's life was getting 15 years of important things out of the way so it could skip and let her live without event for the next however long and create a natural breakpoint in the story because of course there was one but no it never ended and she almost wished Starlight had passed out earlier so she could have the Tree of Harmony fresh in her mind because it talked and she needed to remember to ask about that before she forgot but her thoughts were a mess and a runaway train and if only she could focus and come to some important realization she was working towards, but what she needed was sleep, and how could anybody sleep like this, and whoops, looked like it was a little too early, <laughs> a raspy voice whispered to itself behind her, causing her ears to twitch. Rainbow, Twilight muttered, her previous train of thought vanishing like mist from her overexcited and sleep-deprived brain. Oh, you're awake, didn't mean to wake you. Rainbow Dash kept her voice down, and Twilight rolled her head over to see the Pegasus watching them, silhouetted in the dawn light. So, uh, looking like you could use a little more? Because I can totally come back later. She raised an eyebrow. How late did you even stay up? Just fell asleep talking or something? Twilight hugged the couch, sticking to her pose that wasn't as comfortable as it felt like it should be. Five minutes ago, Rainbow pursed her lips. Oh, uh, so are we still on for this morning then? I'm guessing not, huh? Sorry, Rainbow, Twilight apologized, burying her face once again. I don't know how late Starlight will be up, and I'm pretty sure her voice is in no condition to narrate. Rainbow does shrug. Hey, no problem. I thought of something else to do today anyway. Maybe I'll take a long nap and try to be up tonight or something. By the way, if you're just going to sleep, that position is probably bad for your back. With a titanic effort... Twilight twitted herself. I'm not actually sure I am, she corrected. The story didn't exactly end up on a best note to sleep on, and my brain won't turn itself off. I'd be a few hours still, she yawned, fanning her mouth with a hoof. Oh, Rainbow perked up. Well, I was gonna go for a lazy fly if you want to come with. Fresh air might help? I've got nothing better to do. Twilight stretched, arching her back, and climbed off the couch, tonguing the inside of her mouth and suddenly thinking thoughts. Of breakfast. Where are we going? I still half asleep, Twanet asked, following Rainbow on a carefree course for the sky, up and away from Ponyville. Oh, you'll find out, Rainbow called back over her shoulder, flipping and looping pointlessly to help Twilight keep up. With a faint note of concern, she added, 
You're not getting tired, are you? There's a difference between being sleepy and able to sleep, Twilight responded, though she was hardly to the point of dragging herself for the brisk winter air. And physically exhausted. I'm good. Rainbow Dash nodded, soaring ahead. We're not going to Clownsdale, are we? Because I forgot to brush my mane, Twilight's voice to fought as soon as it sprang to mind. The floating mass of white was along their general trajectory, after all. Yeah, sorta. Rainbow spun back around so she was facing Twilight and shocked. My parents' place, actually. Why? Your parents? Twilight frowned, a snowbound conversation the previous day surfacing in her memory. Hold on, didn't Starlight say they might spoil the story if you asked them the wrong thing, in case they had heard parts of it? Rainbow did a flip. Oh, I know, I wasn't thinking we'd talk to them. It's just something I want to see if I can borrow. Starlight might think it's cool. If you're sure, Twilight replied wearily, the chill forcing her to yawn again. Now that she was out and moving around again, her brain didn't feel nearly so crowded. Maybe she could actually think harder about some of the things in Starlight's story, it started when the flame, which was supposedly an element of harmony, reconstituted her after disappearing, which was fascinating in and of itself. That didn't make Starlight an element, did it? Without any offense intended, Twilight dismissed that concept as absurd. She and her friends were the elements already. It had to have something to do with the regional differences between pony physiology Starlight had noted separating herself from the northern ponies. But was that an equestrian thing, or... Was there something unique about Starlight? They could easily test, of course, if they could somehow get the schematics for Embry's machines. And then, the tree had talked to her, actually talked. There were so many ways to interpret that, but the fact that the tree hadn't sounded omniscient was the most interesting part. It implied there were limits to what the elements could do, and while Twilight knew that on a factual level, it was never something she had been able to test before. But there was also the unusual vision Starlight had had at the very start of the story with creatures she was 99% sure were changelings. What had happened to the changelings after Shining Armor's wedding anyway? Twilight made a mental note to ask Celestia how much she knew about them later. If Starlight was seeing magical visions of changelings and hearing magical voices from Harmony Flame, so, and especially if using unknown magic had somehow altered her perceptions when facing Hemlock, was there a pattern there? Starlight being unusually sensitive to some sort of magical, sensory-altering feedback, perhaps? That was another thing that would be testable, though she'd first need to find some sort of concrete baseline to figure out exactly what Starlight could do. What if this could somehow be adapted into a new form of communication, or a new media, or... Twilight drifted too far into a happy, sciencey oblivion to hear Rainbow repeatedly calling her name. Twilight awoke to a warm, mechanical rumbling. Her first thought was that she was in bed, which was nice. Her second thought, she bolted up in alarm. Hadn't she just been flying? Jumping was the wrong thing to do, as her head collided with something far closer above her than any bed had a right to have. Growling, she rubbed her head, opened her eyes, and looked up. The room she was in was gray, metal, and in incredibly compact, though someone had gone to great effort to make it look nice regardless by installing real wood trim everywhere it would fit. Everything about the decoration was economical, from shelves and drawers that fit in impossibly small places to fold-out hooks embedded in the ceiling for hanging things. It was lit by her horn, though she could see a dim circle set into the roof that was probably an unpowered mana light. She had taken several introductory courses on mana technology at Celestia's school, but her area of focus had always been more theoretical than practical applications. Hearing Starlight talk about Iron Ridge, she was probably missing out. And, she quickly realized, whatever it was, was moving. Suddenly getting a very good idea of where she was, Starlight set up much more carefully this time. The thing she had collided with was a bunk bed, big enough that a larger stallion could curl up comfortably, but only just. If she wanted to stretch her legs, she'd have to get creative, like everything else in the room, and had been designed with space and not luxury in mind. She yawned one more time, let her hose hit the faintly vibrating floor, and found the exit. A late afternoon sky showered light all around her as she climbed out onto a deck and confirmed her suspicions. She was on an airship. 
It was a small one, with the controls housed at the rear, and against an ornate rudder wheel lounged a familiar Pegasus with a shock of rainbow hair. Oh, hey, Twilight! Rainbow Dash looked up, nodding at appreciation as she piloted the craft away from Cloudsdale. Looks like you're out. What do you think? Pretty sweet, huh? Twilight rubbed the side of her head, still shaking off drowsiness. I fell asleep while flying, didn't I? Yeah, you kinda did, Rainbow apologized, shrugging helplessly. Slave flying, basically. Stop flying and kinda started to drift away with this dreamy smile on your face. Were you thinking about nerd stuff or something? Maybe? Dwally threatened, trying to remember exactly where her thoughts had taken her. Anyway, I caught you and lugged you the rest of the way, so no biggie. So basically, I went and told my parents I'd found a fellow airship enthusiast in Ponyville and asked if I could borrow their old one to show it off. They thought it was a great idea. Actually, that's not saying much because they think everything I do is a great idea, but, you know. So, think Starlight will be impressed? Twilight, truthfully, had no idea how to answer. Well, I... probably? I mean, it looks like a nice ship. Yeah, Rainbow patted the rudder wheel, lounging in the shade of the ship's giant zeppelin. It's an old one for sure, and not that big or fancy, but my dad takes really good care of it, so it's still in great condition. She blinked. Starlight does like airships, right? I mean, I figured since if she traveled a bunch and was able to go crazy places, she'd probably had one of her own. Well, I'd assume so, Twilight said hopefully. She did just get one in the story. We're going back to Ponyville now, right? Rainbow Dash leaned over the edge, checking their forward course. That's the plan. Figure it shouldn't be too hard to dock this at the castle. Figured if she's too beat to keep talking, we could nerd about this together or even cruise the countryside just for fun. Could even get on with telling it here if she likes. I mean... We're better to talk about an adventure than in the sky. Grinning, she sat back, her head against the railing as she controlled the rudder with one hind leg. Sure do have a lot of memories of this boat. Anyway, I might as well catch you up on the story while we fly back, Twilight decided, taking a seat on a bench at the edge of the ship. And we'll see if Starlight is awake and feels like talking, and if not, well, we'll see. Twilight waved a large tray of still warm hay burgers under the still sleeping Starlight's nose, Rainbow Dash grinning out its side. Oh, Starlight, she sang, levitating the food. We got takeout on our way back. Are you awake now? To be honest, she's pretty cute when she sleeps, Rainbow remarked, pointing a hoof at the way Starlight curled, a hoof still wrapped over her barely open muzzle. We could just take pictures and let her carry on. Starlight snuffled, finally attracted by the smell of hot food, and moved her hoof over her eyes. What time is it? she mumbled, not quite rolling over. Free in the afternoon, Rainbow greeted, plopping down on the couch next to her with such force that Starlight bounced, landing in an undignified heap. You're welcome. Ugh, Starlight croaked, her voice sounding every bit as unfortunate as Twilight expected it to. Could I get some water? Twilight obliged, floating a glass over, made easier by the fact that Starlight had slept in the kitchen. Welcome back to the waking world, she greeted, half frowning and half smiley. I told you not to go on for so long, you know. That was not an ending I wanted to try to get to sleep on. Oh, sorry, Starlight repeated once the entire glass had been drained. I really didn't think that part was going to mean nearly as long as it was. My throat hurts. Twilight ruled her eyes good-naturedly. Wow, really? I wonder why. Rainbow Dash, please do me a favor, and no matter how carried away Starlight gets today with storytelling, if she starts at all, whack her with a newspaper if she goes over two hours. Mm, Rainbow shrugged. Yeah, we'll see. Twilight briefed me on some of the stuff you said the other day, and I'm honestly like... She blinked. The only reason I believe it's real is because if I didn't believe in stuff that was too awesome to be true, I wouldn't believe I exist either. Her face cracked in a grin. What I'm saying is, who cares if it's real? This story sounds awesome, but I gotta hear it from you, Starlight. Well, I don't think I'm up for seeing if the start of the Griffin Empire is the same length I remember it just yet, Starlight replied with a cough. Mind if I just take a short break first? I've been talking far too much lately. There was another reason I didn't want you to push yourself last night, Twilight sighed. But it's fine. We have hay burgers and something of Rainbow's parents you might be interested in. Starlight grinned, lighting her horn and taking a sandwich. Oh, really? Let's take a look, then. You like her, Rainbow Dash beamed, flapping smugly along the side of the ship that was more than the air above Twilight's castle. Twilight hovered beside her, and Starlight floated in her own magic, an expression 
of intense remembrance on her face. This is a good ship, Starlight eventually said, finishing her appraisal. Someone's taken very good care of her. Twilight giggled. That's exactly what Rainbow said on the way back here. Yeah, it's my parents' ship from their days as adventurers. Rainbow nodded, landing on the deck, Twilight and Starlight following her. Doesn't get used much anymore, but my dad keeps it running nice and easy. Figured you might think it's cool, since we're talking about adventures and stuff, right? Starlight nodded back. So we have this for a day trip or something? Well, Rainbow shoveled her hooves. Technically, I just said I'd bring it back when I was done, and they probably wouldn't mind if I hung on to it for a while. But, yeah, I don't know what I'd actually thought we'd do with it. Or the countryside or something? I just thought it would be cool. It certainly brings back memories, Starlight sighed. I recognize this model. It's an old one from several years before I left Equestia for the North. You studied other airships besides Shine Sparks? Twilight raised an eyebrow. I was around them for a fair bit, Starlight answered. And the idea of using me to make breakthroughs for new technology didn't dine with Sosa, so I was involved with the technology and ponies who knew about it too. By the way, did you have any questions from last night? I sort of nodded off. Yeah, you did, Twilight said, slightly chagrined. Did you ever figure out what truly happened with Hemlock on the river? Whether you... Starlight sighed. I was afraid that would be what you asked. It's complicated, and it's one of those things you should really let the story answer for you. The one thing to keep in mind is that even though I'm telling things to the best of my ability, my memories are colored by my own feelings, so the version I told might have been just a little more... violent than what actually happened. Or maybe it was exactly what I perceived it as. You'll find out. Twilight swallowed and nodded. Oh, question for me! Rainbow frantically waved the hoof. Did Valet and Amber ever get hitched? Twilight spent a pretty long time on them when summarizing this to me. Twilight blushed furiously. I did not. Oh, they saw each other again. Anyway, Starlight yawned, instinctively settling into a cozy corner of the deck. Why don't we just fly around for a bit, and if I'm feeling up to it later, I can try to tell another section? And actually keep it short this time? Rainbow gripped the wheel with an eager grin. That's a terrible answer, but sure, whatever. Destination? Nowhere. Deadline? Nothing. Mission? Have a lazy evening in the sky. Sure, why not? End of chapter 300.